the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. God bless you, man. I had, we had a great study today. We're talking about the fact is that, and let me see if I can bring up the uh, the slide. But the main thing is this. We need to be able to encourage one another. We really need to make sure we don't be deceived to do and go to the contrary of the doctrine of Christ. There's so many things I'm looking at in the past, and the past discrimination, everything else. It's all because people said that it's more important to, to this, be deceived. It will be to be deceived, willingly not study the word of God, willingly not understand the doctrine of Christ, and start to go after the doctrine of men. Sometimes we talk about the different political parties. We would do, we'll go with the things of a political party where it's okay to hate, it's okay to discriminate, it's okay to do all the bad things. Because you think about it, some of these political parties start all the way from the Atlantic slave trade, start all the way from 1776, start all the way when this first country brought in slaves or brought in indigenous servants. And said those things that they do atrocities toward mankind. All the bringing division, all the bringing of strength. And then all of a sudden we went through the slave trade, the sex plantations, the, the atrocities, the, 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 the brutalization. It's just not acceptable and contrary to the doctrine of Christ. And I'm trying to sit there and say to you, let us do the things that make for peace. Let us do the things that are puts into the doctrine of God. So that's what the study is about today. The fact is, let's not be duped. Because so many people have been duped. So many people have been deceived. So many people have lied to and tricked to do things and ignore the teaching of Christ. I'm saying is, let's see what, and I'm just saying it right now. Go by what the Word says. Does the Word tell you to discriminate? Does the Word tell you to hate? Does the Word tell you to not forgive? Or does the Word tell you to forgive? Does the Word tell you to love? That's the doctrine and teaching of Christ. And if you are operating outside of that, and you feel that it's okay because you're approved by man, I'm telling you, it's not man that's going to get you in eternal life. It's not man's doctrine. It's not political parties, not the color of skin, but it's the love of God. Follow the doctrine, people. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Hey, have a great, happy Father's Day. Joy, Juneteenth, tomorrow, 19th. Juneteenth, 19th. Tomorrow, reflect on it. We've got a lot of bad things went behind those people getting to the point where they can celebrate freedom. And then that's appropriate to be able to have a day of celebrating the, 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 the long so that we can celebrate the right that we're all free. And yet, even though we had to make an amendment, we're all free so that on the 4th of July, we can all say Independence Day. Every man being independent to choose. And God gives you the right to choose. And that choice is life through Christ. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you listening. And we'll see you when we see you. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll break this down to like A, B, C, and D, as always, so that you enjoy. So enjoy the study. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye bye. That's what has been going on, right? And then you get angry with somebody because they choose not to believe or choose to believe in something else. Okay. Let your fruit. Let your light shine, believers. So other people can, can, can look at your life and the choices they make. They can see the path you're walking on. Walk the path and continue to walk the path of the teaching of Christ. Let your light shine so people can see it. And then they can make a comparison of the choice they make. But if they sit there and see all this condemnation and all this other junk, it doesn't make a difference to them. All they see is your condemnation. And that's what I want to be able to talk about. 
Because also Christianity uses a weapon. Judgment and condemnation as a weapon. It's a tool for discrimination, tool for isolation, ostracizing ostracize, people, trying to put the guilt trip on people. You don't need to put a guilt trip, trip on anybody. You just need to show, man, I, I'm, I am the joy of the Lord is my strength. Not the anger of you making a decision that's contrary to the will of God. I don't need to get angry about that. I need to sit there and say, I gave you something to look at. I gave you the opportunity to know that there's decisions that are under the teaching of Christ that you should consider. You know? <laughs> That's all I want to be able to do. So let's talk about this. Let's use the Word of God. I talked enough. Let's use the Word of God. Let's use the Scriptures to, to go for the things that need to be addressed in your life and my life. Amen. For those that are believers and those that are not. This one is talking about believers. Because it applies to the believer. And I, one of my friends is very good at saying this. The, 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 to him, the gospel has no meaning. And the sad thing about it, because of the manipulation, the discrimination, the killing, all the things that are contrary to the teaching of Christ, people look at. Our history is full of hate and discrimination and, and supremacy either white supremacy or black supremacy or any other type of supremacy it's, it's to sit there and think that this is what Christ is about this is what God is about God wants us to be one and he don't want us to force anybody to be one he wants you to choose Come, God is, you know, there was a did, for some of y'all, I don't know if you know, there was a war in heaven and one third of those angels were kicked out. So what that means, what that tells you, it tells you this. God don't need to, God is not gonna bring mess up. So why would you wanna bring mess up? Think you're gonna go up. Because you, if you're not gonna do his will, <laughs> you're not going up. You can sit down, you can sit there all day long and sit there and say, Lord, I, I wanna preach hate. I want to preach so that people go and hurt people. It's telling me, telling people, look, sin. I'm going to tell I preach against sin. But what sin is assaulting somebody, beating somebody, killing somebody. That is also what I preach against, right? If you don't preach against bad behavior, I'm talking about behavior of people who sit there think they're doing the will of God by killing somebody, hurting somebody, beating somebody. Then, then you, you're not teaching. Because if somebody leaves your message and then go and hurt somebody, discriminate against somebody, kill somebody, then that's not teaching. You know, you, if you're not preaching against that too, if you're not preaching against this uh, discrimination, if you're not preaching against things such as lynching, even modern day lynching, if you're not preaching against discrimination, if you're not preaching against the things that cause division and that hurt people, if you're not preaching against that, and then you, you, but you want to preach against something else and think that you, you're, doing, you're doing God's will, and then if somebody can, can take your message and go and do it, hurt somebody, and you didn't preach the gospel. You preached something else. You didn't preach the love of God. You preached the hate of man. And that's what God, that's what we're going to talk about today. I want to give it, use this opportunity to, to actually get into, and let the scriptures speak for themselves. Amen. Uh, the commentary is commentary. <laughs> you, could, you, you could throw out the bath water, bath cook, the bath water. You don't throw out the baby. The baby is the gospel, the teacher of the gospel. But just understand that these characters and these actions toward people, we're running people away because we sit there and think that it's cool to, to use and weaponize the gospel. 
Let's see what the scripture says about that, amen? All right. The title, as you see here, is Duped to Ignore the Teaching of Christ, meaning trick or deceive, to ignore the teaching of Christ so you can judge and condemn others. And not only just condemn them, you actually execute your, your judgment against them to, if they're not, you consider them not worthy. So you sit there and you say they're not saved. You sit there and you lynch them. You sit there and you discriminate against them. You sit there and do any type of thing nasty and bad to them. You sit there and tell them that they don't have the grace of God. And yet you show no grace and you show no mercy. So therefore you, you obviously don't recognize that you fell into the same category of inequity as they are. Because you now decided that you're going to do the will of God to hurt somebody. So we don't we want to make sure that you're not duped or deceived. That's the that and then that also tell the people in this world. A lot of people that, that, that codes against you talk about it, call themselves believers. They've been deceived, they do, and they they they've been deceived on their own salvation. Amen. So the focus we always do, and these some of these other boxes in there, like Romans 14, 12, so that every one of us should give an account to God. So if you use hate, you use condemnation, you use the gospel as a weapon, you're going to give an account to that. If you don't repent, you have to repent. If you don't repent, then you, you're going to have to, you give an account. You're going to go before God. You're going to say, the reason I hated this person, the reason I, I directed somebody else to hurt that person, is because I'm doing your will. You're going to find out God has said that you, you didn't do my will. Because in your preaching, your teaching, direct somebody to hurt somebody. You're not doing my will. You're doing, you're doing your will. You're doing man's will. You're mindful of the things of man and not of God. Because if you're mindful of the things of God, you recognize mercy and grace that was given to you. We want to be able to teach the gospel, Yeshua's way, Christ's way, Jesus' way, and go by what's written. Amen? We want to go by what's written. That's why we're using this title here today. That's why I want you to make sure that this platform, the whole purpose of this platform, is to use like Nehemiah 8, 8 so they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. So that's what we want to be able to do, is to, to give to be, to read the Word of God distinctly and give sense, understanding, amen, of the reading of the Word of God. So this, that's what I'm just doing for you. For many of you will quote something based on what you heard and instead of based on what is written. So let's, let's have the gospel. Let's teach the gospel based on what's written. And let's practice what is written. And I guarantee you, if we talk about what is written, and we practice what is written, you won't be discriminating against people. You won't be hating people. You won't be killing people. You won't be beating people up. You won't be doing bad things to people, cursing them out and everything else, using your jealousy and envy and all that other stuff. You will not be doing that if you recognize that that is not the way that Christ taught. And Christ, once again, I'm telling you again, I know you got people based on color, based on their, their doctrine, is to teach you to do things contrary to the gospel because they're mindful of things of man. But I'm telling you, be mindful of the things of God and his word. If it's not in the word of God, and you, you can automatically recognize that any hatefulness any exclusion instead of trying to bring you in. Any, any sense of saying you are better than somebody else. When you're supposed to be humble enough to say, I've been there, brother. And, and, and I understand where you, where you came from or where you are because I've been there. 
And I wasn't worthy either. I just received the grace of God. We need to do the same thing. Show the grace of God and the mercy of God. Amen. So let's get into this. And once again, happy Father's Day for those. And if you know, I want fathers to be loving fathers. Like your father in heaven. And yeah, somebody gonna say, well, what about in the Old Testament? You didn't, you don't know, fall of man. Maybe just in case those who are believers don't get the fall of man. When man fell, when Adam and Eve fell, <laughs> we, we, we went into a decline and a disconnect from God. You know, that's why the first man was born in this, in this world that God said be fruitful and replenish. And the fact is that the first man that came, you know what he did? He killed his brother. That set the tone for you to understand the nature of man. And Abel chose to follow God's will. That's the choice that mankind is given. He even gave Adam and Eve a choice to do what I told him, gave you guidance to do. But you chose to do opposite what I told you not to do. And that's what you have people also given the choice, even though they heard what the Word of God says. That's why I call this a dupe to ignore the teaching of Christ. Because you're not, you, you, if you, you're doing any of that hate, if you do doing all that bad stuff to people, and to your family, to your spouse, and think you're doing God's will, you've been duped, you've been deceived. And you've been deceiving others. You've been causing others to run away from Christ because of what you actually, you can't sit there and think that they did. This nation, that the people who enslaved people, beat people, harm people, hurt people, did everything they could and called the people, sub people. And you said that's Christian? You call that Christianity? Do you think that all those people who did the bad things to people are gonna go before God justified by the blood and teaching of Christ? Christ said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So if you keep his commandments, then I should see the fruits of it for myself and for you. Yeah, because we all got to go and make our, get ourselves together, right? We all got to get our act together. We're not, we're not called of sin to come short of the glory of God, but do you want to continue to practice sin? When Christ said, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven's hand, it means repent, meaning the intent to do right, not wrong. But if you practice wrong, if you practice hate, and you teach your children to hate, a word of repentance. How many generations have been taught to hate? How many? How many of those people are going to now have to, how many, how many of your children and children's children will have to go before God and justify their rationale for hating their fellow man? How many? That's what I'm talking about this title. Duke to ignore the teaching of Christ so you can judge and condemn others and actually execute your punishment, your discrimination, and all this stuff. Some say, I'm not a racist. A tree is no man's fruit. You, I'm not, I don't, you don't have to be. If you don't want to be, don't be one. And let your fruit show that you're not one. You don't need to worry about somebody questioning or judging that because that's not up to them. It's for you to bear good fruit. Your fruit, your character, the content of your character tells us who you are. Don't worry about what people tell you who you are. Let your, let your light shine. And it'll speak for itself. Amen? <laughs> I love that. That's a good one, ain't it? Better make a t-shirt out of that. 
<laughs> all right, let's get into the scriptures. All right, the first thing that we all want to do is remember that the Lord gave a, a pattern of prayer for those of us that are believers. I'm always talking, that's who I'm always referring to. But it means only to those that are believers. But believers, you need to know you got to do His will. And he gave us a pattern of, of, of prayer to remind us to do his will. So that when you do the things in the flesh to hurt somebody, to discriminate against somebody, to think of somebody less than, than you, to dehumanize people, you know it's not his will because we're going to read his will, right? Let's go into it. First of all, he said, absence of man therefore pray. You mean you don't have to do this verbatim, but the fact is he wants you to use this matter of prayer. After this matter, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And you know the discrimination is not in heaven. You know killing and murdering is not in heaven. You know jealousy and envy and strife and sedition, the works of the flesh are not in heaven. So we're trying to say is that first, God is your king for that kingdom come. But the main thing, the main ingredients of that prayer is that his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. His will. So if you sit there and, and, and do any type of discrimination, any type of murdering, any type of lying, deceiving, deceiving people, anything other than love, anything other than bearing good fruit, the fruits of the Spirit. When you know the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such says no law. He wants you to love one another. And we're going to go through some of the scriptures and talk about that. But the key to it is, his will be done. If you're judging, condemning, and keeping people from receiving the gospel, if you're causing people to not come into the gospel, if you're sitting there trying to say they got to come in your way, that they got to change before they come in, what Christ died for the ungodly, he did. That's what the scripture said, he died for the ungodly. He didn't, he didn't come to call the righteous. For sinners to repent. So what that means for you? You supposed to call the unrighteous to repent and receive the mercy and grace of God. You receive mercy. You're supposed to give mercy. That's what the gospel says today. How many people can come into your presence, and come into your congregation, and feel welcome despite of who they are? Can a junkie come to you for help? Can, can, can somebody that's a, been a criminal come to you? Will they be received in your congregation? Those are the things you got to ask yourself. I'm doing his will. Because that's what it says. Thy will be done in earth as it is. Give us this day, which means that this manner of prayer is daily. Give us this day our daily bread. He know we're not talking about a loaf of bread. We're not talking about food. We're talking about spiritual reading of the Word of God. His Word is the daily bread. Christ said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And he taught and gave his word. And they wrote it down. And they testified. They gave the gospel. And they taught and taught teaching. And using all of us today to continue to teach his will. And if you operate contrary to his will, then you're an antichrist. That's heavy, ain't it? Ask yourself, what is an antichrist? 
So we sit there worrying about waiting for the Antichrist to show up. Are you an Antichrist? Because if you are not teaching and operating according to this word, what are you? Huh? What are you? So that will be done. He said, give us this day our daily bread. And then he says in 12, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt to us. Are you forgiving people? This, I don't care what it is. Are you forgiving people because of the color of their skin? Are you forgiving people because of their nationality? Are you forgiving people that, that have different uh, denominations? Are you forgiving people who don't choose Christ? Are you forgiving people who are atheists? Are you forgiving them? Some of you got the audacity to say, how can I forgive them? Because he told you to. It's not about your opinion. It's not about your, your, how you think it's supposed to be. What does the word of God tell you to do? Forgive. Because you shouldn't be offended because they made a decision. You shouldn't be offended because somebody has an atheist. You shouldn't be offended because somebody has a Muslim. You shouldn't be forget, forget, offended because of anything a person chooses to be. You should be rejoicing in who you chose to be. So they can see your life. And they can see why is they, they that your choice is the better choice. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eat is not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And that's that's what we're going to close up with. And that's what I want you to remember. Is the fact is we don't judge and condemn one another. We love one another. We work with one another. Amen. All right. So. Thank you for listening. We'll probably cover those scriptures again uh, next week if the Lord is willing. But the fact is, don't be duped. Don't be deceived. Trust in God. Love one another. Encourage one another. So that we can all be on high. As all nations, all families, all tongues, all kinders. Let's not take the man construct. Because man construct, social construct, can send you to eternal death. And I fear that so many people, especially since the Crusades, all the way up to now, generation and generations, I'm afraid. And some of those people are not in the Bible. Bible says absolute Bible says absolute body is present with the Lord. That's only if you're in the Lord. And the Bible says a tree is no best for you. Amen? Hey, we all got things to work on. But the main thing we can least work on is not to condemn one another, but encourage one another. That's what I want to say. God bless you. I appreciate you listening. And I'll see you when I see you. Have a great holiday. Happy Father's Day. Happy June 19th. Enjoy. Reflect on it. And rejoice in freedom. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.